My name is Barbara Tears. I am the director of the William and Linda Steer Herbarium of the New York Botanical Garden. The New York Botanical Garden was founded in the late 1800s and the founder, Nathaniel Lord Britton was his name, had the idea that there should be a focal point for botanical studies of all types, botanical exploration, classification, education, and horticulture. The herbarium itself opened its doors in about 1905 and between the time when Britain had the first idea of the collection and when he actually opened the doors, he was amassing collections from all over. The most important herbarium in New York City prior to the garden's opening was at Columbia University. That collection became the nucleus of ours and he brought in collections from all over, private institutions, other uh, Princeton University, all sorts of other places that were willing to have all their collections centered here. And then that tradition of trying to document as many of the plants of the New World has continued to today, and that's actually still the focus of much of our research. Some people have branched out to other parts of the world, but again, um, documenting all the plants and they, that are naturally occurring remains the focus of this institution. The herbarium holds content among its 7.3 million specimens. Roughly three and a half million of those are from the New World, North and South America. And probably at least five million are what we think of as what the average person thinks of when they think of plants. That is trees, flowers, shrubs. But there are other kinds that are, that are of, of of plants or plant-like organisms that are included in, the, in a herbarium. There are algae, seaweeds and other related uh, things that grow in, mostly in water. There are bryophytes, mosses and related organisms. There are also lichens, which we think of as growing on the bark of trees often, and then fungi, mushrooms and other uh, related organisms. So those form about two million of the collections. Our resources are used, uh, the, the two traditional user groups have been botanists who are trying to, to document all the plants of a given region. So there's an area, whether a country, a state, a county even, and they, they want to have an accounting of every single plant that grows there so that those can be identified for conservation purposes, for use purposes, any purpose. Those are people who are working on what we call floras. A flora is a, is a publication about all the plants of an area. The other type of people are looking at what we call monographic, or they're working on monographic projects, which means that they are interested in all the plants of a particular type. They want to understand how it's diversified, how it's evolved, uh, how to tell one from the other. And um, so their types of work are sort of broader in scale and have more sort of evolutionary implications for how, how plants evolved over time. More and more these days, though, as we put more content online, uh, we see a different type of user, people who are doing studies that require big data sets. Perhaps they're doing ecological modeling, where they want to see what plants um, grow where now, as opposed to where they used to grow. And then using some um, different programs, they can begin to make projections about how, where plants might grow in the future. And this becomes very important when we're thinking about how, um, how, glo how uh, global climate change may affect natural areas, could even affect where certain crops can grow, may affect pollinators, the relationship between insects and the plants that they pollinate. Um, and then there are people who are looking at evolution on a very fine scale, even from one population of a plant on, on one rocky slope to another rocky slope. They're trying to understand how minor differences lead to bigger differences, um, which leads to being different species. And then also um, invasive species. How, how did invasive species, when did they get here? How have they changed chemically, molecularly since they changed? and what, you know, leading to, you know, what might be done to, uh, to try to control them. So those are the, those are the sort of the major categories of uses that, that the herbarium's put to.